The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, John preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, here you have John the Baptist who tells us that he comes to baptize with water. It's a sign of repentance, a sign of cleansing. But he says, there is someone who is coming after me. He clearly distinguishes the one who is coming after him by saying, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. What's the difference? Our life is meant more than just cleansing. Our life is meant for life itself. And that life can be given to us only by the Spirit. What is important is that the Father vouches for that which John the Baptist has said. There is the witness of the dove descending upon Jesus as Jesus gets into the waters of Jordan. And then the voice, you are my son, the beloved, my favor rests upon you. Clearly, the father has chosen his son for a purpose. The baptism gives an acknowledgement from the father's side that what John the Baptist said is indeed true. The baptism of Jesus, my dear friends, becomes a prelude to what will happen shortly after in the Gospel of Mark. As Jesus steps out of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan, being baptized by John the Baptist, straight away he enters into the desert to be tempted. And after the temptation begins his Galilean ministry, at which time he chooses the two brothers, Andrew and Peter, and then James and John, the sons of Zebedee. And from then on, the ministry begins. Dear friends, my brothers and sisters, St. Jerome tells us Christians are made, not born. Why? Baptism is a decision. Of course, Many of us would have been children when we were baptized, infants. Our parents took that decision to have us baptized. For some, there may be an adult baptism when they take the decision themselves. What is important is that as we move from our childhood to adulthood, we need to become more and more aware of what my baptism means, we cannot overlook it. Because something intrinsic to my baptism is my identity, who I have become, a child of God, a son, a daughter of God. And one must realize, dear friends, that every identity is intimately also linked with a task. There cannot be 
an identity without a task. The baptism of Jesus left them with a task. And that is why the father vouched for him. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And with that assurance, he began his ministry, he was tempted and began his ministry. And after some time, the father's voice would be heard again on Mount Tabor at the transfiguration. Once again, the father will vouch for his son. This is my beloved son in, with whom, on whom my favor rests, with whom I am well pleased. And in the Gospel of Luke, you will also hear, listen to him. What exactly is the task that Jesus embraced because of his baptism? The assurance that the Father gave him, both at his baptism and at the transfiguration, that he must get down and go to Jerusalem. That's the place where he will accomplish his task. And we know what happened in Jerusalem. What the baptism makes of Jesus, my dear friends, is that he becomes resolute. He becomes aware of what God wants him to do. You and I also need to be aware what God wants us to do. In the first reading we hear, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Rather, my ways and my thoughts are higher than your ways and your thoughts. What is Isaiah telling us? That in some way, we have to acknowledge that God wants to give us the best. And for that, we need to, in some way, agree that God is higher than us. That we need Him. That we need to listen to Him. That we need to do that which is His will. Just as Jesus did. His baptism, at his baptism, he accepted the will of the Father. And that's why he went to Jerusalem. What about you and I? We are called to do the will of the Father. Erasmus of Rotterdam, the one who gave us the first printed Greek New Testament in 1516, 1516, would say, you have been baptized, but think not you are straight away a Christian. The flesh is touched with salt, but what if your mind remains unsalted? The body is anointed, yes, yet the mind can remain unanointed. But if we are buried with Christ, we are buried with Christ within, and already practice walking with him in the newness of life, we are Christian. Our baptism, dear friends, brothers and sisters, is a task, and we, it's a decision. In our adulthood, we must make that decision afresh, because only then can we really follow Jesus along the way he took. Our road to discipleship, yes, began with our baptism, but it has to be completed. We have to be resolute as Jesus was resolute, knowing that we are the adopted sons and daughters of God because of what Jesus did. May the Spirit of God then help us discern this noble identity you and I have received as the children of of God. And may this identi identity, dear friends, then propel us towards that task that Jesus has entrusted to each one of us. Amen.